Hey everybody, hello from beautiful Austin, Texas. My name is Ben Rudolph, and today we are talking about some really important news, uh, the launch of a free version of Microsoft Teams. Uh, Teams is part of Microsoft 365, and it's really the home for collaboration, for ideation, for integration, uh, chat, and really a way to help organizations get organized. Uh, and to help celebrate the news, I'm really excited to be here with two totally awesome people, Adam Ryan from The Hustle, and Kira James from the Microsoft Teams product marketing team. Say that five times fast. <laughs> uh, so before we get started and talking about all the great stuff that the hustle is doing with Microsoft Teams and, uh, and Microsoft 365, Kira, give us a little bit of detail on what happened today and what the news is. Yeah, I am super excited to talk about how there is a free version of Microsoft Teams available in 40 languages. So let's think about this. Any organization, big or small, can now achieve more together. And that means that you get the best of what Teams has to offer for free. Awesome. And Adam, talking about the hustle, I'd love to know, like, share with the world a little bit what the hustle is. And let's talk about that journey, because exactly what Kira said, you were a really small organization that's starting to grow into a much larger organization. So let's get started. Tell me a little bit about the hustle. Yeah, so the hustle exists to empower the movers, shakers, and doers of the world to make their dent. Uh, we've started with news. Um, so we send a daily email every day at 9 a.m. Pacific to help working professionals be smarter at work. Uh, so that's how we got started. We also do events. Um, and as you mentioned, in the last year and a half, we've grown from about five employees to about 20 with two offices and a few remote employees. So that is uh, Microsoft 365 has been kind of part of that journey. That, that's awesome. I know we were talking before we, before we started. You've been in a really interesting technology journey. I think you said you... Uh, you had some Macs, you had some Windows PCs, you were doing a really wide variety of tools, and you helped consolidate everything around Microsoft 365. So give me a little bit of backstory on that. How did that work? Sure. So uh, we're, we're uh, budget constraints, so we started Craigslist Mac shopping <laughs> okay. uh, to get started. And, and, uh, you know, as, uh, as, and that's kind of as we grew, that's what we thought we were going to be. And then, then all of a sudden we, we adopted Slack, then we had G Suite, and then our sales team wanted Office 365. So we had all of these different tools. And, and it really, uh, the problem started to, to get larger and larger as our staff got larger and larger. Sure. So uh, what we decided uh, just a, a few months ago now is to, to move over to, to surfaces to, to align that stream um, for those who need that uh, features and technology. And then as well as uh, to go to Microsoft 365 and, and, and Teams. And we've realized that we could just basically streamline our entire business um, and not have to worry about when we have an Austin office and our San Francisco office and a writer in LA and uh, it's all those problems kind of just went away. I, I think it's really interesting because you're talking about what I would call like a prototypical use case for why Microsoft Teams matters. You had a decentralized workforce, you had people working all over the place, different hours, different work styles, variety of tools that you're trying to consolidate. Um, so I want to turn things over to Kira now so you guys can take us through yeah. how you are using Teams and how you're making most of the product and helping it solve some challenges for your business. So Kira, take it sure. away. More than happy to. And the first place I typically start is on my mobile device. Get up in the morning, stretch, and then say, okay, what's going on in Teams? Do you typically use the activity feed to find out what's going on? Absolutely, yeah, it's, it's how, you know, I know when someone asks me uh, to know if I have to respond immediately or if there's a group chat with, you know, a whole conversation of things. This is uh, right when I get, get my day started, it's, it's what I look at. Sweet, so to that point, you can use the filter feature to figure out what is most important to you. Look at your messages via unreads, at mentions, or replies. Moving onward, you can chat one-on-one -on -one with your colleagues or chat in groups. As you can see here, looks like Patty and Megan had a meeting really quickly. And of course, the bread and butter of what Teams is all about. And I'll go into this a little bit later. So let me move on to show you what meetings capabilities look like. From here, you can join a meeting straight from your mobile device making it extremely easy to be on the go, to be across time zones, and to connect with your colleagues no matter where you are. I think this is really interesting because you're probably the same way that I am where, and I think like Kira is as well, where I get up in the morning and the first thing I do once my feet hit the floor is I grab my phone to see what I missed while I was asleep, especially if I've got, Microsoft is a huge company with people all over the world. And I think it's really important to note that the Teams app on my mobile device gives me almost identical functionality to teams that I have on the web through effectively any browser. 
and through the desktop app. So no matter where I want to work or how I want to work, I can get that full Teams functionality. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, we do all of our one-on-ones at local coffee shops. It's been a tradition since we started, and I don't bring my Surface with me there, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have to leave the functionality of like talking to the team if I have a quick meeting or anything in that process. Uh, so yeah, I would say I'm on my phone more than my than my Surface, but at the same time, it's the same functionality. Yeah, you bet. Secure. So where are we going next? So yeah. we talked a little bit about activity feed. What's the next the next click down on that? Sure. As we dive into what this looks like on my laptop, you see the same exact things. I'm gonna hit chat, you see that as well. But here's where I really wanna spend a lot of time. Thinking about teams and how you organize them. Teams can be organized based on function, project, task, or affinity group, making it really easy to stay organized and understand like where the conversation is happening. Many times we're on the go, we're trying to get a lot of things done what channel do I go to or where do I go to figure out certain information? Well, Teams makes that really easy for you. As you can see here, there are three teams, events, advertising, and editorial. And underneath each of these, you'll notice channels. As you can see here, there's a 2X Women of the Year event that's happening. Under advertising, we have best practices. And under editorial, there are different stories that are happening. Adam, could you share a little bit more about how the hustle uses Teams? Yeah, so I think it's important to know context of how, how we were working before. Mm -hmm. uh, we were in Slack and essentially I, I like made the joke one time that I had like 400 different group chats and I like oh never gosh. knew where yes. to go. Right. Uh, but it also had all this information that I wanted to like archive and know to go back to and reference. And so the way we built our teams is based by the de department um, is the overall team. And then each channel underneath that are special projects or, or kind of key initiatives or just fun stuff. So we have like a, a general channel where we just talked about, you know, the Westworld season finale last month or uh, the, the when uh, Friends, all the rumors of Friends relaunching, right? So that's, that's we use it for different purposes, but uh, the, the key piece is being able to just go back and know where it's at uh, and, and be organized that way. Yeah, first, I think we'll do a second video on Westworld after this, and that'll <laughs> be a two-hour right? video. Yeah, we'll yeah. just talk about the last yeah. episode. Um, but from an architectural perspective, I, I love the way that you are setting this up. You've got our broader teams for kind of macro level stuff like advertising, and then each individual project has its own channel. Because right. some of those might be long projects, some of them might be very finite projects. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So we, uh, two examples there. So, so 2X Woman of the Year is a national event series that we do throughout the entire year. Uh, so that is, that, is a, that is an event that is constantly being used and talked about and discussed. Under advertising, we have certain clients who that only might be a four week campaign, right. but at the same time, there's a ton of stuff that goes into that and a lot of files being managed and, and just we wanna keep that organized. So we use that for both. Um, short and long term, it's just basically use case of, of how much usage we, we're going to need to communicate about that. It's, a, it's, it's great to see. I, mean, I love the level of organization. I'm kind of an operational person, so seeing this level of precision, just, it, it just warms my heart. It's ah, great to yes, see. It, but you touched on something really important. Which you talked about things you wanted to archive and stuff you wanted to find. And there's features and functionality within Teams that makes that incredibly easy. So Kira, I want you to show us the magic of that command bar up top. Well, of course. Okay, so your command bar, this is where magic really happens. So you can forward slash and see a list of tons of commands that allow you to make it really easy to connect with people or, for example, find your saved messages. I put forward slash save. The magic is happening. And there you have it, all your saved messages all in one spot, making it super easy to figure out what it is you're looking for. So, so long are the days that you're like, wait, where did I save this? Did I talk to someone verbally about it? Now you can just check your messages easily and find what you're looking for. Yeah, I think, you know, the moving a team over to a new piece of software is like incredibly complicated, or it should be. And, you know, and when we first were going over the functionalities of team, it was like, well, this is pretty robust and we can kind of have all this stuff here. Uh, but to our surprise, like the first 90% was super simple. Like everything to come on board, like the, the, the command bar and all that good stuff. And then you find our Easter eggs along the way that you're like, wow, I did not know you can make your own meme and all these other things that are the, the fun things that you find along the way that um, doesn't necessarily come with a description at the beginning. Yeah, I really love how you talked about getting people onto Teams. And so one great feature that you can do is actually send an email to a, a Teams channel, making it really easy. You hit this ellipsis, you get the email address, put that in your to fill, it comes right to the channel. 
increase accountability and transparency, and then all your conversations can happen right in, in the team's environment, yeah. Meaning, making it really easy and simple for people to get on board. And then when you think about that new employee that enjoys the teams as the hustle continues to grow, you don't have to sit down and forward all the emails from the past, go into a channel, add them to a team, have them scroll through, and they can get caught up really easily. Yeah. It's a really, like, I, this is something I, I, if I'm going to make a, you know, a personal metaphor here, I think I always said, like, I'm a video game guy. Love to play games. Love my Xbox. And my favorite games are the ones that I can just pick up and play. And there are some of those games where you, everybody can sit down on the couch, you pick it up, you play, you have a great time. But then to get great at it, that last 10%, there's just more and more functionality, different play modes, and Teams feels very similar to me where anybody can jump in and in just a couple of minutes you can get up and running, very simple to use, but to your point, there's always new things being added, there's lots of stuff that you can add on and everybody can start to discover their own way to make it their own. Yeah, it's, you know, we don't have any IT staff or technical staff as a, as a whopping 19 person company. <laughs> uh, and so as we, as we continued to, to onboard this, uh, we really just relied on our end users to learn how to do it. And, and we haven't had any, many issues with that. Uh, when, when talking about you know, onboarding staff, which also allowed this to, to be a lot easier, uh, we have a, a tab called best practices. And so as we onboard staff, all, that's, all those files and everything's right there. And, I no longer have to uh, to do an hour session of digging exactly. through digging through the the different uh, storage to, to find those. That's great. So we talked a little bit about activity feed. We talked about finding old messages and all the cool stuff you can do in the command bar. We talked about chat. Now the thing that we need to talk about is let's let's get to work. Yeah. So I'd love to talk a little bit about how knowing that you have an office uh, in San Francisco, you have an office in Austin, you have writers all over the place how you're using the power of Microsoft 365 and Teams to collaborate and really get work done. Yeah, uh, the, you know, the ability right now, we have a lot of Word docs, right, that we use, whether it's from our editorial staff to, to talk about different pieces for the day or our sales team sharing, you know, PowerPoint, uh, wh whatever it is. And so what we've really loved and, and a, a key feature for us is being able to, to edit those docs uh, in Teams and then be able to, to talk about them on the same thread. Um, and then those files are saved. So a uh, great example is we have, uh, we have a contest right now for our sales team of who can send the best cold email and you archive those in a document. That becomes a training document for the next time that I have a new hire. But at the same time, we're all talking and collaborating on that document um, pretty easily. Nice. Kira, you want to show us how it works? Does he already have a document pulled up? Yeah. So right within the Teams interface, you can co-author and co-edit in real time. Now, one single source of truth, making it very easy and you no longer have to worry about version control, which many of us remember. And as you spoke to earlier around, wait, who has what version? And it gets really version, annoying. Version final, final, exactly. number 49, yeah, right? Yeah. We've and all been the, in that situation. Yeah, let's talk about those naming conventions. <laughs> in any case, you can edit right within the Teams environment. I'll hit edit in Teams. My document pops up. There it is. And voila, it's like magic. You can simply add comments. As you can see, they populate right on the side here. Very robust word experience. And more importantly, as Ben mentioned, you can chat alongside the document. Say you're co-authoring, co-elaborating in real time. Yeah. There's a deadline happening, right? Yeah. So people are constantly trying to hurry and, and try to get all the information that they need. So instead of maybe this gets a little cumbersome, you can simply meet now. And as I can see here, one of my colleagues is already on the line for a quick scrum. I'm gonna join this meeting. Okay. And there we are. Little preview to make sure everything looks good. Voila. There we are. So this is one of those features that I think is, I would say almost underrated. Because we, we, we know the power of chat, but the ability again, not to have to hop out and open up Skype for business or use a third party tool or pull out my, mo my mobile device and go from there. This is like, we're working in chat, maybe something isn't quite clear because I'm sure that might happen <laughs> once or twice when you're working on a deadline. The ability to effectively go face to face even if we're 1500 miles apart, really, really powerful stuff. We, we have a sp split office and so I have a, our events team based in San Francisco and our sales team based here. And so I always say like chat is great for speed but every now and then we want to be human mm -hmm. and uh, and just pull up the quick scrum and it'll be five minutes or less and then and then you're good to go. It's, it's great and I, I also like the extensibility that we have 
from even just the, the Office 365 experience where I have things like Word and PowerPoint, I can edit it right in Teams using the, the, the built-in interface, but if I want, I can open up those desktop apps mm -hmm. and get the full desktop experience if I want a little bit deeper functionality or I want to expand or whatever the case may be. Really flexible in how we work. Yeah. So meeting functionality is, is one of those tools that really helps improve efficiency. Now I don't have to jump out to a third-party tool. I can have a chat, I can have an audio discussion, I can have a video call, all within the Teams environment. And this is something you're using for other tools as well, because there were some things that you know, Microsoft 365 and Teams has really helped to streamline, but there were some processes you already had in place. You're just making them more efficient with Teams. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so we have a massive events team of two people. Okay, uh, And Huge. Uh, they pull off a, about 30 events a year with 10,000 attendees. And they had a process in place before we moved to Microsoft 365 uh, using a, a tool called Asana. Uh, it was a project management tool, and it was essentially their Bible of how they managed all of their projects that they were working on. So when telling them that we were we were transitioning into to Teams, that was the first thing that they asked. Right. Like moment well, of panic. Yeah, like oh my god, are you getting rid of this? And uh, and to you know our surprise and, and pretty awesome, we learned that Microsoft 365 and, and Teams had like uh, over a hundred integrations. Right. One of them being Asana. And so uh, you know as we kind of went into it, we saw that with just like really like two clicks, the integration was done, it was loaded in, and now through the channel of 2X Woman of the Year, which is one of our event initiatives, the team can manage their Asana tasks that they're doing. They can check it off, they can add one in. It basically is full functionality while also still conversing and never leaving the screen. Um, so actually, it made our very detailed process-oriented team even more efficient, which was great. You bet. Kira, why don't you show us, uh, show us how it works? Yeah, so you can simply add a new task here check them off the box when you're done completing your task. And again, increase transparency and accountability. Everybody knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. But even great that you mentioned more apps and extensibility for your team. So outside of our Office 365 apps, we have so many other apps that you can integrate within Teams, making it really easy to customize the way you work. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of e extensibility and collaboration, we can actually make our team more extensible to people outside of our organization, right? Because I can add guests to a channel like this yeah. to collaborate with people who may not be working at the hustle. So show me that as well. Yeah. So quickly, as you see up here, this team has guests, letting you know that there are other people outside of your workforce that are part of this particular team. So just a great reminder to let you know that one, you have the full power of having everybody work on the same thing no matter where they work. And then two, making sure that they have access to everything makes your life that much easier. No more having to jump between email and chats and trying to figure out what your vendors or suppliers have. They can be joined into the team really easily. Yeah, we love this feature. So we have a ton of speakers that we work with mm -hmm. so we can just add them right into that event um, or for our advertising side we have a lot of our partners and, and we'll just put them right into their channel they only have access to that but it allows us to quickly communicate with them to instead of setting up calls and, and doing the whole process there this is great and I think this is a really good spot to wrap things up we started with rolling out of bed and checking our activity feed we've moved all the way through collaborating with people outside of the organizations we've talked meetings we've talked command bar we've talked word integration, we've talked a ton of great stuff about Teams. Um, before we go, I wanna make sure that you get a chance to tell everybody, where do I get the hustle? Absolutely, so if you want to have our daily email sent to you to get the tech and business news, uh, you can go to thehustle.co, put in your email address, and tomorrow morning will be your best friend with the news. Awesome, so make sure you sign up for that. Uh, and also make sure you go to Microsoft.com slash Teams. Remember, there's a free version of Microsoft Teams available today in 40 different languages, ready for every person, every organization, big or small, to start collaborating, start to make more out of your day. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you in the next one.